This morning the Lord gave me a message entitled, He'll Turn the Hearts. And in Malachi chapter 4, isn't it a qu- interesting that God would choose to end the Old Testament with this verse and promise. Behold, can you read it please? And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children mm. and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Mm. Lest that come and strike the earth with a curse. So he prophesies, and actually it starts with verse 5, it says, Behold, I'll send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, we all know that John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. So that prophecy was fulfilled when John the Baptist came. I think you all know that, but I want to remind you of it so that we're not waiting for Elijah to come back at another time. When John the Baptist came, he came in the spirit of Elijah. Now, then it says, and he'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. Now, biblically, when you're having a real spiritual revival, dads, your hearts are going to be turned towards your children. And kids and young people, when you have a revival, your hearts will be turned towards your father. That's the... That's the prophecy here. There's nothing else that has to happen in a prophetic sense because John the Baptist already came in the spirit of Elijah. In other words, when we are born again and when the spirit of God fills us, fathers, our our hearts are turned towards our kids and our kids, our hearts are turned towards our fathers. That's what the Bible says. That's how you know you're spiritual. Now turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12. It's such an amazing scripture. And the reason I'm hitting this today on Father's Day is because when we talk about prophecy, I've been talking about prophecy these last four or five, six weeks. And now that I'm back home, I'm just going to continue to talk about what we can expect. Well, what you can expect if you've really been touched by the Spirit of God. Fathers, you're going to become a better dad. I was actually thinking tonight of doing a, a top 10 dads at our church it's too hard. There are so many good fathers in this church. I'm telling you, I, I can't even boil it down to 10. I, I could probably boil it down to about 150 men that I know are doing a phenomenal job, maybe 200 men that I know are probably some of the best dads I've ever met. For some reason, the dads at ICLV have taken it seriously. So therefore, revival caused us to be better fathers. Are y'all still with me here? So, Hebrews chapter 12. Can you give me a little more volume up here? Just a touch more. Hebrews 12, verse 7 through 12. Read it, please. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. Mm. For what son is there that whom a father does not chasten? Mm. But if you are without chastening, of which all of you have been partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Wow. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? Mm. For they indeed for a few days chastened us as they seemed best to them. As it seemed best to them. Now, now underline that sentence because it helps you understand the, the difference between earthly fathers and the heavenly father. Okay, next verse. But he for our prophet yeah. that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless... Mm. Afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Okay, fathers are important because God identifies himself as God the Father. He identifies his relationship with Jesus as his only son. So Jeremiah, the concept of fatherhood is like number one with God. So in this verse, he's talking about the fact that he says, listen, your earthly fathers chasing you as they thought best, but I'm doing it so that it's going to produce holiness in your life. So in other words, God's saying, listen, I want to talk to you about what it means to be a real father. And then he's talking about the fact that our earthly fathers did what seemed right. My father was not a perfect dad, but he did what seemed right. With all his frailties and all the lack of uh, good parenting that he received as a child, with all his World War II experiences that, that marked him, I can tell you honestly that I know deep in my heart, number one, my dad loved me. Number two, although he wasn't perfect, I think he was a good dad. He worked with what he had. Does that make sense to everybody? But what really impacted me is one day I started looking to God as my father. That was hard for me. I could accept Jesus as my son, but God as my father, I was so rebellious. 
Because when you're, when you're disappointed growing up, you tend to get a little rebellious. I was a lot rebellious. And, and so, so when I became a Christian, yeah, I like Jesus, but the Father, uh, yeah. But as time uh, moved on, the Holy Spirit moved in my life, more and more I saw him as my father, as my real father, that he was the one that wanted to treat me like a son. In this case, it's talking about discipline. Do you know, a lot of people say, well, when bad things happen to me, it's God disciplined me. Is that true? Sometimes it is true. Honestly, it is true. God, if you're really a child of God, he has the right to, to discipline you. True or untrue? But can I tell you, most bad things that happen to us, it's not God. It's just not. Most of the time it's us. Most of the time it's someone else. Other times it's the devil. Other times the fact we live in a broken world that's all jacked up and one day everything will be redeemed. But in the meantime, we have a loving father who loves us and cares for us, who wants to give us all the good things and that means sometimes even giving us a little spanking. Amen. And he says if he doesn't do that, then you're not a real son or a daughter. So fathers are important. Now, this speaks about how he relates to you. Now my question is, how do you relate to God the Father? How do you... How, what's your relationship like with dad? And, and do you treat him like a good, are you a good son to that heavenly father? So the first thing we need to think about on Father's Day is this. We need to think about the fact that he identifies himself as our father and how are we going to respond? Now, coming back to Malachi, I'm going to try to develop this thinking for you and then we're, Tim's going to continue tonight. Malachi 4.6. Um, when you look at this, it talks about he'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. So true revival means that God is going to turn our hearts towards our kids. In other words, if we're spiritual, that means we're going to be better dads. Amen and amen. amen. Now, why is that? Because the Bible says where our treasure is, there our heart is. So if your treasure are your children, your heart will immediately be directed towards your kids. But if your treasure is your car, if your treasure is your title, if your treasure is your property, if your treasure is your career, if your treasure is whatever else besides your wife and children, your priorities are jacked up. Because your heart is always directed towards your treasure. So I want you to really get this. If the Holy Spirit is really doing a work on us, then our treasure shifts from being things and titles and positions and success. It shifts to our kids. I'm a motivational guy. I love, I love motivational stuff. I love, I love success things. And I, I'm a reader. I love to get involved in all of the Maxwell stuff. And that stuff I love. I eat it up. But I can never get... Je I can never get off track in terms that all of a sudden, you know what's on my, and I, I know years ago they used to say, well, you need to put, if you want a car, put a car on your refrigerator. Put a, you want another house, put a house on your refrigerator. Now, I'm not 100% against that, but I think if you have one picture of a car, you should have 90 pictures of your kids. <laughs> because where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. I'm not saying you can't have good things. I hope you all have good things. I hope that, that, that you get another home. I hope you get a good car. I hope you get a boat. I don't care. Whatever, whatever God wants to bless you with, I think it's all good. I'm not against that. What I'm saying is, what is your treasure? <laughs> because if your treasure are your children and your grandchildren, now you say, ah, wait a second, I don't have kids. I've never had kids. I don't have kids. You're leaving me out of this message. No, I'm not. Because if you have never had children, if you, maybe your children are all grown up and else you left the home, I've got good news for you. The spirit of a father should be in you because you are a Christian. And if you're a real Christian with the spirit of God, then guess what's going to happen? You're going to want to adopt the second, third, fourth generations. You're, that's why Team Focus, we started Team Focus with Mike Godfrey. He brought it here to Vegas. Uh, it's fathers of young, young men without dads. That's why we partner with them. That's why Nurses is leading here in Vegas. Because we believe that whether you have children of your own or not, you can become a father to the next generation. Am I right or wrong? I've got statistics. I don't have time to go through them today. Maybe, oh, I think some of them out there. 21 million children are being raised in single-parent homes right now. 82% of single parents are moms. When you start looking statistically, we're being raised in a culture that's fatherless. 
and the best chance America has right now, and if you, if you go to any prison, and John, and you know, your team could tell me that, and I've read statistics on it, but I'm sure you could tell stories, but if you go to any prison, over 80 to 90% of the inmates did not have a father in the home or a significant father. It's been proven statistically. Am I right or wrong? So now they start this beautiful ministry where basically they're providing dads and moms to people that never really had dads and moms. Right or right? We call them mentors or coaches, right? But that's significantly the spirit of God is on them. Therefore, they want to father these men and, fa and, and mother these women. They want to be there for them to give them what they didn't have growing up. People say, man, if we just gave these people money, they'd, they'd be okay. No, 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 no. No, it's not the money they lack. Now, it could be one of the side effects, but ultimately they need a relationship. They need what God designed, the turning of the hearts of the fathers to the sons and daughters. And if you, didn't have the, if you don't have kids, guess what? Adopt. If you don't have kids, volunteer to teach Sunday school. If you don't have kids, uh, uh, become a, 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 a coach in, in, in touching these prisoners. If you, if you don't have kids, guess what? Become one of the mentors and team focus to, to boys without dads. There's so many opportunities. Yes, you can commensurate the entire life that you didn't have kids, but guess what? You can have kids. There's so many. I, we have two African sons. Uh, when I was in... Um, when I was in Montreal, I got to spend some time with, with uh, uh, Fernand, which we call Keto. And uh, he's seven foot. He now, he's gained some weight. He's 231 pounds. He's got this big old uh, must, uh, beard thing here. And he shaved his head. He looks mean now. Oh, he's right there. There you go. You can't really tell there because a little bit, he, he's dark. <laughs> <laughs> that's my mom. She's 90. And, and, uh, and, that's, and I told my mom the other day, you see, you got to get this, friends, because... When there's really a move of God in us, we become better sons, we become better fathers, we become better daughters. My mom, who's 90, is worried about finances. So I told my mom, I said, <laughs> I said, mom, when your money runs out, I said, I got money. And I said, don't you worry about anything. I don't want you to worry another, because she, she had to get a tooth repaired, and, and she doesn't like that. And, she, you know, and I said, Mom, I don't want you to worry about anything, because when you're done with your money, I said, you can come to me, and I'll take care of you. Come on now. Come on now. The hearts of the sons turn back to the fathers, and of course to the mothers. You see what happens, friends, when there's real revival, we become better parents, we become better dads, we become better single parents, we become better children, we become better, be, be, better, better foster parents, we become people that, that love. That's why we brought Fernand Joseph into our home. I mean, Lynn, you, you, know, you know what it's been like to have Joseph and Fernand because you're part of our team and you've seen the interaction there. Is I'll tell you what, it's, it's taken so much time, money, energy to be a father and a mother to these kids. My wife used to wake up at 5 o'clock every morning just to make the meals because you had a 6'9 kid and a 6'10 kid who weighed, you know, 180 pounds. Mama had to cook for them and, and Keto weighed 156 pounds at 6'10". So mama had to make him meals every morning. She made him four, five, six eggs each, eggs, eggs each. But what happens is when there's really revival in us, almost every morning I pray this prayer, Holy Spirit, I renounce every other spirit, and I invite the Holy Spirit to possess me. Help me be a better man, a better pastor, a better leader, a better husband, and a better dad. The one that can help me become a better dad is the Holy Spirit. Now, friends, you can, you can feel guilty the rest of your life for all your mistakes. But guess what? That'll never change your family. Maybe today's a great day to say, hey, I, I made mistakes as a dad. But God, forgive me, cleanse me. From this day on, I will no longer live or be motivated by guilt. I'm going to become the man that God wants me to be. Okay, dads. Have there any dads been, have we made any mistakes in our life? Lift up your hand, join your pastor, and lift up your hands like you just don't care. <laughs> if we've really been forgiven, then from this day on, I was talking to a doctor the other day, and, and for some reason he started opening up to me, and he says, he says, you know what, I've never told my kids that I really was proud of them, and the man's 80 years old. 
He says, I never told my kids I was proud of them until just recently. And as he told the story, he just started crying right in front of me. It was the weirdest thing. That's what happens when you've got the spirit of a father. I could actually help father a man that's 80. Because I've, I've got, got the spirit of my heavenly father in me, which makes me want to take care of people, which makes me want to care about. Now, you can't care for everybody, but you understand what I'm saying. Now, in this particular, yeah, there's that passion in you. So, I, I wrote there, Houston, we have a problem. Because uh, here's, here's, here's what's going to happen in our society. It's going to get worse, too. I, I don't want to be a, uh, unless somehow the church plays the role that we're supposed to play. Now, here's what's going to happen. We're not getting better fathers in our society. We're getting worse fathers. So what's happening is our sons and daughters are getting lost. Denise and I went to a, a clean show the other day, about a year, year and a half ago at one of the casinos. It's a clean show. It was all good and all that. But as we're walking down the hallway of the casino, right there on a, a table, I don't even know what kind of table it was. I don't know a lot about gambling. But someone, there was a girl in her underwear dancing right there. I'm thinking, that girl had, didn't have a daddy. She, he did, she didn't have a daddy. She had no daddy. I look at some of these prisoners, and John could tell you all about that. These, these prisoners, they didn't have a daddy. They didn't have daddy to say yes, no. Man, I, when, I, when my kids were growing up, I had my famous count to three thing. I, I'd say, okay, come here. You know, they look at you, smile. Okay, I'm going to count to three. If I get to three, you know what's going to happen. One. Two. Three. They're right there. The other one was this. You know how kids, they go through their no stage? I'm the dad, because I'm a dad, right? So as a no, this is a no stage. You little kids, <laughs> come here, baby. No! <laughs> you know what my response was? Excuse me? Did I hear you say no to your dad? Uh, that's not permitted. But see, a, ma a mom's going to go, oh, I love you, you're so cute, you're so wonderful. Dad go, mm -hmm. that should not be in your vocabulary. <laughs> not to your daddy. You see why? Because a father knows how to discipline and also knows how to love. It's sad that an 80-year-old man did not tell him he appreciated his kids until they were, and, 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 and respected his kids until they were in their 50s. That's sad. There's a gaping hole in their soul because they were designed to be affirmed. They were designed to be loved. Father's hearts we're designed to come towards the kids. Now, unfortunately, many fathers' hearts are stuck in entertainment. They're stuck in fantasy. Whether it's pornography or fantasy football. Or careers, or things, or self. Many fathers, in fact, never grew up to become real men. They're still teenagers. They're still focused on themselves. Instead of being focused on raising up a family that loves God and is healthy. Now, there's an interesting thing that happened. And I, I wrote a book. I don't know if you have a, a copy of that. You have a, just throw that. Pasquale can bring it up to me. I wrote the book, The Transform Family. And are there copies in the bookstore? This is the most important thing I've ever done in my life. Because I see fatherhood going down the drain in America. But I see for us to change our families. And some of you have been married to men that never grew up. Am I right or wrong? And because of that, they're not good fathers. They were able to father a child, but not become a father. Now, when I wrote Transform Families, because you know what? I actually felt like after 20 years, I actually did a good job. Not a great job, because I'm an imperfect person like anyone else. But I actually felt there's things that I learned in 28 years of being a dad that I think could help other dads. So dads, if there's enough copies in the bookstore, pick it up. It's going to help you grow up and be the man that you're supposed to be and a dad you're supposed to be. Because your true legacy is not that BMW or that, that Harley, Harley Davidson, although I'm not against either of them. I'm against fathers never becoming fathers, remaining self-centered, all about stuff, all about this, all about that, and not about their truest legacy. I think Jacob understood this when he blessed every one of his kids and Joseph's two kids. I want you to go with me to Ephesians chapter 6. Am I going over your head or are you all getting this? Am I preaching to the choir? I hope this helps though. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 4 please. 
And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, mm. but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. And then Colossians 3.21. Colossians 3.21. Fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Okay, now look at these two verses. Keep your finger on both. Don't provoke your children to wrath. In other words, there's certain things that we parent, fathers can do that can actually produce wrath in our kids. Wrath means anger. Any? <laughs> no, you can't relate to that. Okay. Um, but it also says we can actually discourage our kids. So in other words, it says we can anger our kids... Although we're responsible for thoughts, our feelings, and actions, if, if, if we're not a godly father, we can actually provoke our kids to anger and even to discouragement. This is interesting. Because when God wants to talk about himself, he says he's the father. And when he talks about us as fathers and sons and daughters, it's important to him. Okay. What's God's perfect plan? I love this Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 through 6. Let's go 3 through 4 just to whet everybody's appetite. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him mm. before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now look at verse 5. Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, all right. <laughs> what happens if you grew up in a family where dad wasn't there? Or you grew up in a family where dad was an alcoholic or a crackhead? Or dad abused your mom? In, in fact, I've got a little video. I want you to take a look at this little video before we go any further. I, I was watching this online yesterday. I, I found it online and, and Ryan found the real copy and paid the copyrights for it. So it was kind of good. Let's, let's check out this video because I, I think it speaks about this point really, really well. Dad, you don't know it right now, but I'm watching you. Watching the things you do. I'm watching the way you treat people. The way you treat me and my mom and my sister. The way you live your life is having a big impact on me. When it's time for me to choose a career and provide for my family, your work ethic will be on my mind. The time you spend with me, even doing simple things, will give me a sense of security. There will be times in my life where I struggle with integrity and I may be not sure what to do. But I will recall how you stood up for what was right, even if you could have looked the other way. Any of the choices you are making, I will also make. Please don't be afraid to show me your failures, to show me your mistakes. I will learn from them. Dad, are you listening? I'm watching. Watching to see if you really believe what you say about God. I need you to help show me the way. Show me how to live life that isn't safe, but is good. So I'm watching you, Dad, every day. You're teaching me how to live, whether you know it or not. They're watching us. And every, every man in this room, we, we have the opportunity 
to show the spirit of the Father. Whether we, are, we have kids or not, we can find kids, trust me. And what happens as sons is a true sign of growth is that as sons and daughters, we begin to, number one, have a right relationship with the Heavenly Father. Secondly, we begin to look at our earthly fathers differently. That's what I did. It's funny, when Jesus taught the one prayer, it starts off with our Father. He didn't say my Father, he said our Father. It's the one transference that he wanted us to get. If we are going to understand anything as God wants to become your father, not some distant idol, he wants to become the one that loves you, believes in you, disciplines you at times, and he wants that to be transferred to others. Forgiveness, love. You know, there's a difference between respect and honor. A lot of times in Zechariah 1.4, it says, don't be like your dad. And I, I could tell you that for me there was a struggle because I didn't respect some of the things my dad did. But I still had to honor him. I think when you get the spirit of God in you, you realize the difference between respecting and honor. And sometimes as children, because we, we look at our parents, maybe they have a drug problem or alcohol problem or an anger problem, we not only stop respecting them, we stop honoring them. And that's where we make the mistake. When I looked at my dad, after I got the spirit in me and he started teaching me, he showed me the difference between respecting my dad and honoring him. If we can do both, that's wonderful. But what happens when you don't have a godly father? What happens if you have an abusive father? I mean, at those times, what happens if you have a father that abandoned you and left you and you and, you, you and your mom were the only ones there and you had to manage your way through it? What happens when your dad was a dog? What do you do? Well, it's hard. You can't respect him, but what can you do? You can forgive him and you can honor him anyway. That's right. That's what I did with my dad. I forgave him and I honored him. I forgave him and I honored him. I forgave him and I honored him. And because of that, I was able to reach out to my own father with love. And because of that, I was able to lead my father to Christ. Difference between respect and honor. I forgave my dad for all his weaknesses, but I chose to honor him. That's the big shift in the spirit. Now, let's start talking about realignment, then we're going to pray. In the next couple of minutes, I just want to strike this. There's a problem. Men who never grew up and children that allowed something or someone to cut in. Man, it's all about loving, serving, and obeying God the Father, and then being a good son to God, being a good father to others. Have you received the spirit of adoption, or do you feel like and act like an orphan? Turn with me to Romans 8, 15, and 17. This is our last scripture. I just, I read so many scriptures yesterday, and I wanted to kind of develop biblically, because a lot of times we don't spend time developing a real biblical idea of what it means to be a dad, what it means to be a son, what it means to see my dad, what it means to be a dad, and what it means to be a dad to others. So look at this, Romans 8, 15 through 17. It's a very striking scripture. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Hmm. All right, let's land this plane. There's something called the spirit of adoption. Because some of you grew up without a dad. And because of that, you don't have the spirit of adoption. You have an orphan spirit. You've been walking around life with this big old hole in your spirit. And it's because you didn't have a, 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 a godly dad, a good dad, a, a, a spirit-filled dad, a dad that really believed in you and loved you and put good into you. And so young person... Some of you are adults right now, and you're still walking around with a big old hole in you because you never received the spirit of adoption. You say, what is that? That's the way God always wanted you to feel. It's the way that God always wanted you to feel. It's the way that, that you should have felt growing up, which you didn't feel. It actually comes to a point where he says, okay, no matter what happened in your past, I can fill you with the spirit of adoption. Whether you had a daddy or you didn't have a daddy. Whether you had a good daddy, a bad daddy, an absent daddy, abusive daddy. He says, listen, all that I'm going to lay aside right now. I can heal you of that because I want to fill you with the spirit of adoption. And I'm going to ask, Denise, go ahead and grab the microphone because I'm, I'm going to have the worship team come on up too. I'm heading to the South Campus this morning. I'm really excited about that. I haven't been there in a long time. So I'm going to preach at the South Campus. We're going to have fun because they asked daddy to come by. <laughs> 
and I like being the daddy of this ministry. I like, I, I, I love this. I, 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 you know, everything I do, I don't, I, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm a bond servant. I'm one that says I'm a slave because I chose to be a slave. I'm a, I love my church. I love our, I love you guys. I think of you as kids. I think of you as adult kids. I think of you as world changers. And my desire has always been to see a double portion on the next generations. Now, now, I, I want to close with this. The last slide, please. When you receive a spirit of adoption, you're not insecure anymore. Now you're totally secure in who you are, totally secure in the love of the Father. You are just, John, Jeremy, you got it. You've been adopted by God. Insecurity goes out the window. Instead of functioning out of insecurity, you function out of security and love. That's what God wants you to experience. Everything you should have growing up, which you might not have. And he says, I got a solution for that. It's called the spirit of adoption. Ready? Take it. So how do I get it? And then we're going to close. Ask forgiveness of the Father. Because many times we've not been good sons or daughters. Number two, forgive all those that hurt you, including your fathers. Forgive yourselves for all your mistakes. And I've made a bunch. Secondly, ask the Holy Spirit for that spirit of adoption. It's the only solution that God gives for us to make up for 10, 20 years that may have been negative, critical, bad. He says, listen, I'll fill you, not with a spirit of fear, but a spirit of adoption. And I'm going to encourage you, after you leave this room, to reach out. If you're a father, reach out to your sons, daughters, grandchildren. Bring it back to church tonight. Watch what God's going to do in the spirit. Tonight's going to be a night to honor the fathers. Reach out in love. Look at the talents, the love languages of your kids and grandkids, your great-grandkids, or the ones that you're going to adopt or you can just adopt in the spirit. I have so many people text me this morning, thanks for being my spiritual dad. One young man's a wrestler. He's trying out for the Olympic team. He'll call me every once in a while and text me and sends me a message thanks for being my spiritual dad I can tell you so many people just thanks for being my spiritual dad you see I thought you had a big family I do but I got a whole lot more love to give away because when you have a spirit of adoption it, it shakes over and touches other lives what would happen if everybody here had a spirit of adoption can we all stand in the presence of God finally invest where your treasure is because that's where your heart is Maybe some of us today, we need to get our treasures reoriented. We need to say, from now on, my treasure is my kids, my grandkids. From now on, my treasure is, is uh, the little kids in Sunday school, the kids in the youth group, prisoners. My, 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 my treasure is going to be the kids without dads in Vegas, and I'm going to join Team Focus. Friends, there's enough need to go around. You say, I don't feel like I have a purpose. I'll find your purpose. I got so many broken people that don't have a dad. 